Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Rock Carrier Kindergarten Information Night. Uh, you'll see on the screen that we have uh, Miss Kelly Littlemore, our Vice Principal, and uh, Miss Leanne Dennison, one of our kindergarten teachers for next year. Uh, we are going to be going through a slideshow that is uh, presented by the OCDSB to give you a little bit more information about what Ottawa Carleton District School Board has to offer and a little bit about Rock Carrier itself. So I am, uh, this is a new, new platform for all of us. So I am going to ask um, uh, Ms. Littlemore to start sharing her screen and presenting the uh, slideshow. And we'll get started. We'll just bear with us while we get that, that going. Sorry about that. <laughs> so Kelly is going to share her screen. Yeah. Not that I can see. Okay, here, I they can hear you. <laughs> oh, there we are. And present. There we are. So we'll, I'll just get you to move to the next slide. There we are. So this is our uh, uh, introduction again. So I am Lisa Clayton. I am the principal of Rock Carrier Elementary School. Our vice principal is Kelly Littlemore. We also have two other uh, ladies who work in the office with us. Mrs. Uh, Sarah Stewart is our office administrator and someone you uh, may have already been in contact with or will be in contact with is Brenda Levy. She is our office assistant and she'll be contacting you uh, regarding your uh, registrations that you complete online. Next slide. At this time, I'd like to acknowledge that our meeting tonight is taking place on unceded and unsurrendered Algonquin territory. We thank the Algonquin Nation for hosting us and recognize their enduring presence on this land. So what you're going to learn about tonight, uh, we're going to start with a message from our uh, Director uh, of Education. And we're going to also talk a little bit about our school community, the kindergarten program itself, the extended day program, uh, which is before and after school, and uh, transportation, what you can do as a parent to get ready for kindergarten, and the types of program options that are going to be available to you uh, after kindergarten. And now our director. Welcome to kindergarten and welcome to the OCDSB. We know that this will be the start of a wonderful educational journey for your child. Our kindergarten teachers and early childhood educators look forward to working with you and your child as we embark together on an exciting two years of learning. Our full day kindergarten program is the launch point to an array of programs that the OCDSB offers. During your child's school presentation, you will hear about the opportunities that your child will have to develop their French language skills. In the kindergarten program, our students receive exposure to both French and English language programming in a 50-50 format. They will have the opportunity to develop a strong foundation in both official languages as they begin their educational journey. You will also hear about the early French immersion program where starting in grade one, your child will spend the majority of their day being taught in the French language. Students can also enter French immersion in grade four in the middle French immersion program where two thirds of their day is taught in the French language. In the English and alternative programs, students receive instruction in English as well as 200 minutes per week of French instruction. This is called Core French. All of these programs are available to all of our students. It is your choice. We look forward to welcoming you to our schools and don't hesitate to reach out to your child's designated school to learn more. The first day of school in kindergarten is the first day of a wonderful road ahead. Our OCDSB team is eager to welcome you, your child and your family to our learning community.
So here at um, Rock Carrier and at the OCDSB, we're here to serve every student. Uh, we have a very strong commitment to human rights, equity, and inclusion, and it's included in our uh, strategic plan as well. So a lot of the things that you'll see here at Rock Carrier and within the board really has that focus on human rights, equitable practice, and creating welcoming and safe spaces for all students. Our goal is to meet the individual needs of every student that comes to us. So to help us with that, we actually have a team of um, educators, social workers, psychologists, educational assistants that work with kindergarten teams and um, school, uh, the K to, or the one to 12s to meet the needs and help educators meet the needs of the students that come to us. What we would need um, from you if you feel that your child has a, a need that might uh, require a little extra attention, I encourage you to reach out to me um, when you register and we can explore some of the options that are available to make sure that uh, we're ready to support your child in school. We also have Indigenous education supports available. So if you identify as First Nation, Métis or Inuit, uh, we have an education learning team that might be able to support your entrance to school as well as your time at school. One of the um, things that I think is important to recognize about the OCDSB and about Rock Carrier is that our schools are all grounded in a community of character and exit outcomes. So at the end of your time with us in, uh, or your child's time with us in 14 years from now in grade 12, we really hope that, um, and our goal is to ensure that they have these five skills and five, and five characteristics that are going to set them up for success uh, not just as students in our, in our schools, but as adults. A little bit about Rock Carrier. So currently Rock Carrier has about 313 students on site, but typically in a typical school year, uh, pre-COVID, we usually have about between 450 and 465 students enrolled in kindergarten through grade six. Uh, we currently have three bilingual kindergarten classes, Last year we had four. Uh, we also have an English program from grade one through six, an early French immersion program for grades one through six. We do have a primary and junior congregated gifted program at our school as well, and that is um, through learning support services. We have an extended day program, which is before and after school care. And we also have a partnership with the Lady McDonald Child Care Center. So, uh, and it's right next door. We have a door adjoining the two buildings and that program is for toddlers and preschoolers. So all children's learning develop and development occur in the context of relationships. So we're looking at relationships with other children, with parents, with family members, with educators and the broader com community and the broader environment. This is what our kindergarten program is really based in, is that, um, uh, that learning that happens through relationships. The, um, the importance of early experiences for a child's growth and development is recognized in the kindergarten program, which starts with this understanding. So our kindergarten programs throughout the OCDSB are based in play. And it also is based on, a, it takes a team approach. So each kindergarten team has an, um, an Ontario qualified teacher, as well as a registered early childhood education uh, person that uh, spends time with your children each day. All right, so at Rock Carrier, because we have an extended day program, which means that uh, we have before and after school care, we have two ch early childhood educators attached to each kindergarten program. As you can see our, uh, on the screen is our current um, team. We have uh, three 
um, or four actually Ontario teachers and then six ECEs. So with our EDP program, our kindergarten students who and school age students who are attending the morning EDP would be with an ECE from the time they arrive. Um, and that ECE stays with us until 2.15 in the afternoon. A second ECE joins the team at 10.45. So there is some overlap, uh, but typically it's a teacher and one ECE in the room at uh, any given time, except um, uh, for some of that middle block where it might be two ECEs as well. So here is just some, uh, one of the things that um, we realized that um, might be hard to convey over this type of format is that you're not necessarily seeing the kids and the teachers in action. Um, I just want to draw your attention to some pictures that we have about some of these teams and partnerships. We have uh, in one of our teachers, we might have, or one of our pictures, we see a teacher interacting with a, a group of children. In another, we see an ECE interacting with a group of children. And uh, in a third, we actually see a parent who, has, who had volunteered his time to come in and uh, interact with the students in a performance uh, type of activity. Um, th this picture, of course, these pictures were actually from last year, as you can see from the, um, the lack of uh, distancing that's, uh, that's there. But uh, it just gives you an idea of some of the partnerships that we have. A little bit about our spaces. So... Here you can see one of our kindergarten rooms and uh, this was pre-COVID and our library off to the side. Uh, here's another uh, view of that same room. And again, it's pre-COVID. And here's a picture from this year of one of our classrooms uh, that has some of our COVID protocols in place. Our kindergarten rooms are bright and airy and uh, lots of space for children to um, spread out. There's from another view. And here's a, a picture of one of our hallways. It is set up, as you can see, for some uh, COVID distancing. There are lines on the floor that help us uh, keep our directions going. And you can see some of the cubbies that are in place there. Here's some outdoor space. We have the benefit at Rock Carrier um, of having this beautiful, massive backyard, as many of you will see from uh, playing. So this uh, picture, actually, the bottom one was taken, uh, actually, they were all taken pre-COVID, uh, but it gives you a sense of what uh, our backyard play spaces are like. And the top two are from our kindergarten yard. So at uh, Rock Carrier, we offer a 50-50 bilingual kindergarten program. So half of your child's time will be spent uh, learning in, in a French environment and half will be spent learning in an English environment. There are no specific um, expectations for French language acquisition in the kindergarten program, but our focus is on bilingualism and learning some of those, um, those verbs like I want, I need. Our kindergarten program, like all uh, throughout the province, are based on four frames. And these are the frames that um, uh, your child's teacher will communicate formally with you about. And just to give you a sense of what they, um, uh, what they might look like, I have a, a few notes and I'll just ask, I'll have um, uh, Ms. Dennison add anything that I miss. All right. So in terms of belonging and contributing, some of the questions that we might be looking at are, where do they play? Who do they play with? What are they interested in? How do they participate in large group discussions? How do they demonstrate empathy? How do they approach problems with peers or just on their own? And how do they interact with those peers and adults? Who do they play with? Where do they play? In self-regulation, we might be looking at Things like how do they manage being tired or overstimulated? How do they manage their snacks and their lunch times? How do they manage transitions? Are they aware of their personal safety when they play? And how do they manage their ability to listen and focus at group times? Uh, we're looking at um, 
uh, helping them develop their ways, the ways in which they respond to and manage the, their emotions and the emotions of others. In terms of demonstrating literacy and mathematics behaviors, what we're looking at there is really, you know, how do they manage, what do they know about numbers? How do they use numbers? How do they demonstrate their knowledge of patterns and sorting or measurement? Are they interested in read alouds? How do they respond after a read aloud? What knowledge of letters and sounds have they demonstrated and what environmental print do they recognize? So all of these things are, are uh, especially the demonstrating literacy and mathematics behaviors, we really do look to authentic ways in which they can demonstrate those behaviors. So we may have a center that's set up with a number of different um, uh, writing uh, opportunities. It might be some note paper, there might be some cards, there might be post-it notes, anything to uh, uh, really encourage that authentic writing behavior. Uh, problem solving and innovating. What we're looking for here, what we're wondering about is what are they curious about? What kind of predictions do they make? What kind of questions do they have? Um, and we often look to um, parents and other supports to bring in um, uh, ways to solve that, so help children solve those uh, inquiry questions they might have and those provocations. How do they describe their projects and their creations? And how do they approach projects that, um, that they are engaged in? Uh, Leanne, I'm not, uh, do you have anything that you'd like to add to that? I would just like to say that um, sometimes parents are um, interested in knowing what that looks like in the play-based mm -hmm. classroom. And as you were mentioning, Lisa, about setting up things for children, um, the really great thing about this kindergarten program, which uh, I've been privileged to teach for a few years, is that we really bring the learning to the children and the children bring the learning to us. Um, so I might have a group of children who are busy in the block area and they have been making a castle for a few days. And so to incorporate uh, a little bit of writing in there, I might say, you know, this looks like a great plan. I wonder if we could make blueprints so that tomorrow we can recreate this and maybe add to it. And so before I, they know it, we've got all these friends who might not always be the eager writers. They're busy away drawing and writing and adding labels to their blueprints. And so it's really a beautiful program and everything comes together, the problem solving, the math and literacy behaviors, um, the belonging contributing there as we're all working together as a group. So it's, it's really a beautiful, rich program um, when you get to see it in action, which we do hope that um, parents will be able to see our classrooms and we'll be able to make the learning available. Thank you, Leanne. So I've got a couple of pictures of the learning uh, happening in action here. So we'll just have, uh, there we are. So you can see some of the things that, um, uh, that children might be doing and discovering and working together there. Um, here, here's a little demonstration of voice. Um, the children were, were doing some artwork with and reading a story uh, by Eric Carle. And, you know, you can see some of the little uh, comments that the children had. I'm good at checkers and beat my mom and dad all the time. So that child's voice is very important to us. Go ahead. Another... Um, a lot of our learning is based in literacy as well and literature. So this book was presented to the students and then um, uh, they were able to draw a picture and respond to some question prompts. I'll just get you to click one more time and then we'll be able to see what the curriculum expect. Oh, right. Oops, it is. So one of the, some of the prompts, you'll see the BC 25.1 and the BC, belong, that's, that stands for belonging and contributing. So some of the things here that we're looking at is when we talk about what we like about ourselves, we're learning to recognize personal interests, strengths and accomplishments, to identify and talk about personal preferences and to communicate with others in different ways and for different purposes. This is directly from the uh, program, the kindergarten program the two-year program. And um, it just, 
I think demonstrates that we are looking at that program and being intentional in what we're presenting to the children and the type of learning opportunities that we have for them. I did want to speak a little bit more about the two-year program. When your child comes to us at uh, Rock Carrier, they will be placed in a classroom um, that is a combined uh, combined classroom. So we we speak of the children not just as JKs or SKs, but year one and year two. So we do mix our year one and our year two students together, and they're hopefully with that educator team or with their peers for their the two years that they spend in the kindergarten program. Of course, that's not always possible that they're with the same educator team, but we do try to keep peers together uh, depending on enrollment and, and things like that. This current year, we did have to make some adjustments to that, of course, because, um, uh, because we had a number of students choose to remain online but we do try to keep cohorts together and so that they can develop those relationships as best we can. Here's a couple more pictures of uh, children exploring the play. The play. Um, assessment, evaluation, and reporting. So how will you be told about your child's progress? Informally, frequently. So we have a wonderful team of educators who um, make sure that they're uh, communicating with you regarding expectations and sharing photos with you and sharing stories with you all the time. But there are three formal reporting periods in the school year. The one in November, you'll have um, a paragraph or so about the a teacher's initial observations. In February and in June, you'll have uh, what we call a communication of learning, and that's based on the four frames. So you've heard me talk about the extended day program. The extended day program is for students who are attending uh, grades four through six, and it's before and after school uh, daycare. Now, we have um, extended day program that's in implemented right here at the school. Other, there are some schools with an extended day program that are run by a third party. So registration for the EDP is a, a separate process from the kindergarten uh, registration. So you will have to find that information on the OCDSB website. If you have issues finding the program or the, the link, just give us a call here at the school. Okay, and that's just a little bit more about the extended day program. Um, it, the cost of that is about 23 to $30 per day. Transportation. Now I remember as a, um, as a, par as a parent of a four-year-old when um, years and years ago, that was one thing that I think that most of my friends were mo and myself were most concerned about. How does this transportation work with, with a four-year-old? Um, we do have what we call um, OSTA or Ottawa uh, Student Transportation Authority. And the Ottawa Student Transportation Authority looks after transportation for both the English or the public and the Catholic school board. So you'll go to www.ottawaschoolbus.ca to get information about your bus stop, about any school bus delays, your empty seat applications and your safety tips. So for you, for four-year-olds and five-year-olds, when you're in kindergarten, you are able to access transportation if you live further than 0.8 kilometers away from the school. Okay, and there is no transportation provided to the extended day program. So what can you do to help your child prepare? Now, school is still a good seven months away, eight months away. But in the meantime, what you're going to be doing at home is all the things that you're doing right now. You're going to be playing with, with your child. You're going to be focusing on some daily routines. You're going to listen to them and talk to them and encourage them. And you're going to ask questions and encourage them to ask questions. Uh, you're going to read to them. And um, 
if English is not your first language, you're still going to read to them. You're going to read to them in your first language and uh, develop some of those pre-literacy skills. Some of the other things that um, I would encourage you to do is um, allowing them to practice that independence and being independent. So putting their shoes on, taking their shoes off, um, opening their containers or their yogurt, if you're giving them a little thing of yogurt at lunchtime. Some of those independent skills are going to go a long way to helping them feel safe and secure when they come into the, into the school environment. We're going to help them with those things, but the more secure that they're feeling in their skills, the, the more relaxed they'll be as well. So, there's uh, also a little bit of um, information that you can get at parentinginottawa.ca and it talks all, it's a, a website through the Ottawa Public Health and it talks about child development, dental health, immunization, visual health, communication, all of those good things, okay? Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about program options and you might be saying, oh, but Ms. Clayton, I just want to learn about kindergarten, but kindergarten is the start to a whole career with the uh, um, OCDSB. My children are currently in grade 11 and 12, and um, I remember being in your in your place in grade in JK and thinking, "Wow, that those are some big decisions to make." But you don't have to make those decisions right, right away. Now you can be rest assured that they're going to be in a 50-50 bilingual program um, with very caring educator teams that are going to really be developing some of those skills that are appropriate for four-year-old and five-year-olds. When you come to grade one, you're going to have some decisions to make. You can choose to go with the English with core French program and that is their whole day is spent learning in English except for 40 minutes a day, which is done in French and we call that core French. Then the you have a choice of the early French immersion program. In early French immersion, you have a grade one, you've got 20% of your day that is done in English and that 20% is mathematics. So an hour a day of mathematics that is taught in English and the rest of the program is done in French. In grade two, that changes. And we start, we introduce the uh, formal English instruction. So 60% of your day will be done in French, 40% in English, which with English instruction and mathematics. That changes in grade seven where it goes to a 50-50 program. You also have the option of a middle French immersion program that starts in grade four. And this program, you're continuing with your core French English program from one to three, and then in grade four, we have a middle French immersion program that is actually available just right at Bridalwood Elementary School, uh, so close to us. And um, then there's the alternative program. And the school that serves our area is Regina, uh, Street Public School, which is uh, in Britannia area. And the program that you select is all your decision. Doesn't mean that we're not going to help you. We will provide any information and, and uh, answers to questions you ask us. But at the end of the day, it is a parental decision. So um, one thing that um, you should know the difference between early French immersion and middle French immersion, EFI versus MFI. In grade 12, students are a bit, uh, able to actually write and uh, complete an assessment of their French language skills. And what we've noticed is that there really is no difference in the outcomes between EFI versus MFI. So this is just a quick overview. So in the English program, language, math, science, social studies, health, and the arts are all done in English and core French is 200 minutes a week or 40 minutes per day. Early French immersion, 80% French in grade one with 20% English, uh, which is mathematics, grade two to six, 60, 40, and seven, eight, 50, 50. And there's the middle French immersion program. The English instruction in the middle French immersion is a little bit different. 
uh, you only have, because the children have such a, a strong base in English when they enter the French immersion program in grade four, it, um, the English, formal English instruction is only 40 minutes per day. And there's the alternative program. And I would really recommend if you're interested in this program to contact Regina Street Public School and the principal there, and he can give you a really good overview of their program. Uh, the Family Reception Center is also available. And um, the Family Reception Center wel helps welcome families who uh, may not have any English spoken in the home or who are new, uh, uh, new to the country and new to the area. So important dates. So registration is open right now for kindergarten in September. So I uh, encourage you to go to, our web or go to our website or go to the OCDSB website and fill in a registration form there. And then, once you do that, Brenda Levy from our office will contact you about um, uh, putting in those supplemental forms that we might need. So a, um, a birth certificate, passport, so that's proof of age and then proof of residence in our area as well. Uh, st the student transfer application period is February 1st to February 16th. And uh, that's what we call a cross boundary um, application. So if you do not live within our boundary, and uh, would like to be considered to go to uh, come to our school, you fill out that form uh, online during that period of time. Um, that being said, our student transfer applications would be very limited as we are typically capped at zero um, in terms of acceptance of those. And it's only for those uh, families who are who have exceptional needs. Um, uh, and need to come to our school instead of their home school. So I know that we do have some questions on the, um, you can take that off there now. Stop, you can stop sharing. Um, uh, we have some questions I know that have come in on the question air. So Miss Littlemore is going to uh, pull that up and uh, be able to pass those questions on to me. I do know that we had a question about um, um, attending OCV, Ottawa Carleton Virtual, and then wanting to come back to Rock Carrier. And no, you do not need to re-register through the registration form. And I believe that OCV will be reaching out to parents that way. And we'll be looking at uh, who wants to come in person and who wants to come in, uh, uh, continue to attend virtually, if that's going to be a thing, uh, in the coming weeks, for sure. Sure. Oh, there are 12 questions now. Well, that's great. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, I also had a question about uh, diversity within the school, and we do have a very diverse uh, uh, student population, as well as educator um, uh, population as well. Um, lots of folks from diverse backgrounds and uh, diverse experiences. Um, Re-register. Uh, again, uh, someone's asking about a cross-boundary transfer. We, uh, you do have to go through that transfer process. Uh, we do have gifted program at our school. One of the questions has to do with the gifted program. In terms of accessing the gifted program, there is a specific cognitive criteria that you have to meet. We have a primary program and a junior program, which we say program is one class. So we have one one primary gifted class and one junior gifted class. Uh, there is a cognitive uh, criteria that you have to meet as well as um, we hope that um, uh, students have been um, in, their in their home school and their regular program. We want to make sure that we're meeting needs as best we can. And um, the program is a referral process. So, you work with your learning support teacher at your school and then look towards um, uh, an application or a referral if the school multidisciplinary team deems that that's the best that this would be the best learning environment for your child. 
If you have any questions about it, you might just want to give me a call directly and we can have a chat. Oh, how many kids in the class and how many teachers per class? So currently we have 21 and or 22 students in each of our classes. Uh, that being said, we have had upwards of 29 in, our in each of the classes. We have one uh, Ontario certified teacher in uh, attached to each class, uh, one homeroom teacher, mind you, but they see two teachers. You have to remember, we have an English teacher that's attached to the class and a French teacher that's attached to the class, but not at the same time. So um, Miss Gina is here. Hi, Miss Gina. Miss Gina is currently teaching um, the uh, Engl uh, one English uh, kindergarten program at our school and she shares that class she sees her ki kids every day in the afternoon and there's a French teacher in the morning um, uh, Miss Dennison when she comes back to school she will be seeing her homeroom class for a, a week and then seeing the other homeroom class for a week one of the reasons we we are doing it this way for Miss Dennison's class is that um, for COVID protocols, we just felt that it would better be better to um, spread it out over a week rather than day on, day off. Last year, it would be day on and day off. So in September, depending on the um, reality that we're dealing with, we'll have to make some decisions. But the week on and the week off is working well, and so is the half day, half day. Uh, we have, please remember that there are two ECEs in each of our classes as well. And they stay with the children. So uh, when we're, when we have, so Ms. Dennison is teaching uh, a class, uh, Ms. Gordon and, um, uh, I'm forgetting who now. This is Francisca. <laughs> wow, Ms. Francisca, thank you. Ms. Gordon and Ms. Francisca are with those children for the week. The next week when Madame Kluck is there, Miss Brittany and Miss Francisca are there too. So the ECEs stay with the children and the children stay in their rooms. It's the teachers who move back and forth. The important thing to recognize is that it's their program. It's the children's program. The teachers are there to facilitate and the educators are there to facilitate uh, their learning. After a year of COVID experience, what will you be doing in the, differently in the new year to create a better experience for the kids? Um, there, we'll have to see what the COVID protocols are, but I have to say that the children are spending a great deal of time outdoors uh, now. And that's something that I think, um, even though we were doing that before, not to the extent that we're doing it this year. So we're taking the learning outside. Um, we are, uh, I think that they're, they really are having a, a very good experience in terms of um, uh, their education. It, there are some differences, but when I go into the kindergarten rooms, I'm seeing joy as well, and I'm seeing uh, engagement and uh, it, it looks a little different. We're playing a little differently, maybe. We're playing in pods and we're, um, you might not have, they might not have easy access to things that they want in the moment um, due to cleaning protocols, but uh, they, we're doing everything that we can to keep everyone healthy, safe and engaged. Uh, if you'd like to, if you're interested in gifted programs, please just give me a call and I can, um, I can guide you through that. Ah, Miss Dennison, I think I'm going to have to call on you for this one. So if the year one and the year two students are combined, how does that impact children who are on the late end of the year for turning four and starting JK? So our December babies that are just coming into the program at 3.8 years old. So Miss Dennison has lots and lots of experience. So I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to ask her so, to take that one. 
So in all my years of kindergarten, I've always had JK, SK, or year one and year two students. And the beauty of it is that children, no matter what month they're born in, are all on their own paths in development. And so we get a variety of learners and we always have friends who to look up to as models because of the two years. And we always have friends who are around the same developmental area as we are as well. So it's really beautiful. All the children have their place and we meet them where they are at their level and they always have wonderful connections between the two years. I love the program for this. I'm happy that it's a two-year program because of that because it provides the children like I said with models and with peers that they can relate to. Yes some of our friends are very young um, but this is kindergarten. We are here to meet all range of learners. And the growth is just so amazing in just that one year, as you know, as parents, how much happens and how much will happen from now until we see them in September is amazing, so. The next question is about hybrid classes in the fall. And honestly, I'm not really sure what we're, what we're going to be um, faced with when it comes to September. Um, I know that um, the province and the and the OCDSB is doing everything that they can do in, uh, to make sure that uh, students and uh, staff are remain healthy, and from that, parents and families are remaining healthy. So, what we um, uh, I think we're just going to have to take a wait and see approach. Right now, we are um, all of our children are actually online. And uh, we have a number of, um, I was in a kindergarten class the other day, a virtual kindergarten class, and it was uh, uh, quite exciting. And uh, the teachers are all, and the educators are doing such a great job of keeping the children engaged and, um, and motivated when they're sitting behind a computer screen. So I'm, uh, I'm really, you know, quite a proud principal when it comes to um, uh, what, uh, what's been happening in terms of our our switch to online learning this uh, January, and hopefully we'll all be back in class very soon. Um, in terms of vaccinations, that is well beyond um, my ability to answer. I think that um, uh, you'll have to be looking to, to Ottawa Public Health for those answers. Um, in terms of um, uh, registration, I know that um, parents are, it, it's hard to make that leap to that, uh, to filling out that registration form. But uh, for me, as a as school administrator, we've already started planning for September and kindergarten registration is a part of that, uh, that planning. So if you could get your registrations done, that would be most helpful because it does impact our staffing. So once you um, once you register and once we figure out all of our numbers for attendance, that's when uh, staffing happens at the school level. I know it sounds a little um, strange to be talking about September in January, but trust me, at the school level, we've already started our planning. And uh, any help that you can give us by getting those registrations done would be very helpful. Um, the, I don't see any other questions online. Um, let me just refresh just in case. Lisa, do you mind if I um, address sure. another couple questions that I normally get when I meet parents the first time? Um, a lot of our friends, since they are younger, as you say, um, are often still napping at this time. And so they ask about um, quiet time or rest time. Um, in the kindergarten program, we don't have a nap time but we're really about self-regulation. So we have a quiet area set up for children. And if a friend needs a little bit of quiet time, they're feeling tired, they can go and have a rest in a quiet book, typically in normal years. Um, often children won't choose to nap once they come to school. It's too busy, it's too exciting. They're very invested in what we're doing, but they will come home pretty tired. Um, so that is one of the questions that I'm asked. And, and then about toilet training. Toilet um, training. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so is the other question I often get asked. Um, we're here to help and uh, part of our job is to assist with toileting if needed. Um, remember that your child does have, like I said, all the way till September. So if your child is not potty trained currently, 
do not worry, do not panic. And if you were getting closer to the summer and they still need assistance, please just let us educators know um, at the kindergarten intake interview and, and we will be there to help assist what you're doing already at home. So Leanne, that, uh, that's, a, that's a very good point. And um, each September, we always have children who are not quite toilet trained. So please do not worry about that. The other thing that I'd like to um, just point out about the process, one thing that Leanne reminded me of, normally in September, we do have the opportunity to meet with you one-on-one -on -one to talk about your child. And um, uh, you'll hear from us in June but when that will be. So it will be in September and it will be a one-to-one -one meeting with you and the educators to learn more about your child and what your child might need in terms of support from us as they enter kindergarten. And you'll also um, hear, see a little bit more about the program. Now in May, usually what we do is have everybody come in and see the classrooms and see the program. Now, given we're not going to be able to do that this year, but we're going to figure out something where you can actually uh, meet some of the team and um, uh, you learn a little bit more about uh, the kindergarten program once you register. So we'll reach out to those folks who have registered in May or June and see what we can do to um, give you a little bit more information about things that you might need to pick up over the summer. So it's don't have to do it now. You don't have, don't even go there yet but we will meet with you in May or and or June, give you some more information about what your child might need for September. And um, also uh, hopefully give you a chance to meet some of the, some of the players involved for sure. Um, I don't see any more questions that have come in, um, but I don't want you to go go away thinking that you can't answer, ask any more questions, you are welcome to give the school a call at 613-254-8400. Uh, uh, the office uh, is open this week. We do have people in the building um, answering phones and things like that. So you're more than welcome to give us a call. You can also send us an email. So if you look on our school website, you'll be able to find um, uh, an, the email address and the phone number. Okay, I don't see, again, I don't see any more questions. I'd like to thank Miss Gina and uh, Miss Dennison for being here and Miss Littlemore for uh, managing those slideshows. Definitely a different way of introducing you to our school, but uh, we're so excited to have you join our Rock Carrier community. And if you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. Thanks so much.